guys, I'm going to do a real quick video. Um, some of you have been inboxing me. Actually, a lot have you, a lot of you have been um, contacting me, uh, writing on the page, of course, um, on Facebook, or have been messaging me, um, asking specific questions about homesteading. So I'm going to try to um, um, cut to the chase here. I've actually decided that this is probably, this may end up being one, maybe one, maybe two or three videos, because there's a lot to talk about in this, and so, you know, I try to keep my videos around 10 minutes or less. It's just simple that way. Um, but it's easier for me, and I'm, I'm in the barn, so I'm going to have a few uh, visitors who may have something to say in the midst of everything. But um, a lot of you are asking, you know, why are you homesteading? How do you homestead? Why did you do what you did? And, you know, I have been thinking about this for um, a couple of days, and, um, you know, there's a lot of answers that can be given as to why we uh, specifically have done what we have decided to do. As you can see, I've got a visitor up there. Um, but, but the short answer, the short cut to the chase, real answer is simply independence. Um, you know, I, I don't want to get too deep too personal, you know, um, but the fact of the matter is, is, you know, homesteading is not just about moving out on a farm. You can live out on a farm, um, somebody's laid an egg, uh, you can live out on a farm and that doesn't mean anything. If you're not doing anything, then you're not homesteading. There are folks near and around, you know, where I live that could do more than I do and they don't. They have the skill and they have the power and they've got enough money that they could do a lot of things, but they they just choose not to. Um, so the point that I'm getting at, which I think is what matters, is because a lot of you that are asking still live in the suburbs um, and still maybe you live in an apartment, maybe you live in a condo, maybe you live in the suburbs. Um, you know, we did a lot of what I would consider homesteading long before we got here. And, um, you know... You need to think about what is your skill set more so than, you know, I've got to be out on 20 acres somewhere or 50 acres or five acres or whatever's in your mind. I don't know. Um, because even if you do at some point decide to move, sell your house and move finally, or, you know, maybe that's something you don't think that maybe you will do. Um, let me tell you right now that when God calls you and convicts you to do something, He's not letting up on you until you do it. I have found that out myself uh, over several instances the past several years when it's coming to uh, trying to be debt-free, when it comes to what I felt was the calling to homeschool my children, um, what I feel has been the calling to um, homestead. You know, I, over those processes, um, discovered really quick that when you're convicted, <laughs> you're doing it. So if you feel convicted, let me tell you right now, you may be frustrated with where you're at. I know I got very frustrated being in a, in, in a neighborhood. Um, I felt like I was, I, you know, I started doing things in stages from gardening, seed saving, um, canning. I was very determined to learn how to can foods. Um, seed save. Um, lots of self-defense. As you know, I'm a first degree belt, black belt in Israeli Krav Maga. That took me almost four years to do that. Um, I, um, you know, there's lots of skills, um, that you can learn and practice. Um, if you, you know, can't grow a garden, he's got a lot to say. Uh, if you can't grow a garden where you live, maybe you, maybe you have an aunt. What about your mom's house? Uh, what if you can do a share gardening with somebody? The fact homesteading, is, you know, it's interesting. People say, well, they mentioned, um, they mentioned prepping. They meant all these key words are automatically thrown in. I don't view it that way. I view it as being self-sufficient. What are the skill sets that you can learn, that you can continue to learn, that you can teach your children? to be self-sufficient. It may not be meant for you to be on a huge farm now or ever, but do you have skills? Um, you know, I don't like the idea of entities controlling um, the, you know, the health and fate of my children and, my, and of myself. 
I mean, I, we are dependent, obviously, still to a point. Um, but, you know, I am very uh, concerned about the GMO foods um, and chemicals that we have in our health products. And um, in order for me, and along with the idea of more independence as far as procuring my own food, um, we felt that it was necessary to move to a farm and have a farm. And we prayed on that. We looked at properties and houses and, oh my goodness, uh, for a year, year and a half before we really made a move. And it took that long. What I really want you to understand from this first little video is if you are interested in homesteading and actually being serious about it and you're convicted to do it, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. I mean, it is. I mean, you can make the decision to do it. And you can find materials to teach you. I strongly suggest um, certain books. My next video, actually, I'm probably going to talk about some books that I have um, and will suggest maybe some websites. Uh, maybe we'll dive deeper into that. Um, you just got to start. But you need to understand that, you know, you're not going to be just completely independent living on a farm, raising chickens and a poultry and, you know, have, you know, an acre of corn and whatever. That does not happen overnight. Even when you do it for many, many years, it is a continual learning process. Um, so our life change involves multifacets from the food that we raise to how we save it and, and um, you know, what we do with that. Um, homeschooling our children, um, we're moving into, you know, procuring our own meats. Um, then you're talking about energy. How are you, you know, self-reliant as far as your own energy sources? Um, a lot of people ask, how did I know where to move and what did I do? Well, that takes time, first of all. You need to prioritize what you want and what you're going to be doing um, as far as maybe how you define self-reliance or self-sufficiency. That's only a question. That's a, you can only answer that for yourself. I can't. Um, my two big um, things that were most important to me, well, there were three, but the first two knocked the third one out. Um, was I in a safe area? I did a lot of research. Every time I found a home or a property that we were potentially um, interested in, I did a lot of searches and research online to find out who was near me or what was near me. Um, I can't answer that for you as far as what makes you safe, but I can tell you right now, if I found the greatest piece of land with a beautiful home on it that I could just love forever and raise my children, but there was a rapist living down the road... That wasn't happening. And, and we ran into that sometimes. Um, you need to be aware of those things for your own safety. Why move somewhere when you know there's a threat a mile down the road? So you need to research those items. That was the first priority. Second priority was resources. I'm big into natural resources, whether it be water, land that I can, you know, put animals on, garden on. Um... Do you have woods? Are you going to be reliant on wood heat? Well, it's probably a good idea for you to have some woods. So that was the second thing. And then, of course, the third thing was um, we had to look at area. We had to consider how far of a drive that it was still for my husband to get to work, um, how far, the, but yet we were distant enough from any major city. We are very distant. <laughs> from any major city. Um, so, you know, that's why I say, you know, when people talk about, you know, um, the drive, we drive. We just rearrange how we do it. So that's just, that was not the major priority. The first two items were more of the priority. Uh, it's very hot out here. Uh, it has rained here where we're at, and it's so humid. But so, you know, again, to answer the question, it's, it's about self-reliance. It is about um, understanding me personally that rugged individualism is what made our country. Um, and I want to uphold that and teach my children. I don't want to be completely dependent upon any system. And um, you have to make that choice for yourself, okay? And, and pray on it. 
like I said, if if you're if God convicts you, and He knows, you know, this is what's meant for you, it's going to happen. It may not be on your timeline. I've I found that out, or you know, as I have also found out, sometimes you go, okay, I'm going to do X, but I'm going to do it next week, or I'm going to do it next season. No, you're moving on His timeline. And we, we are finding that out, and you just have to embrace that. So I hope this helps. I know it's a little generic, but it's a wide-open question. You have to answer that for yourself. Um, but I think the broad answer, um, why people will leave it all behind, it's for freedom. It's for independence, as much as we can get. And... Um, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. And I will tell you that it's an evolution in yourself and in your family. And you will be changing in ways you never expected. And you need to welcome that and embrace that. Because to me, those that are willing to sacrifice and move like this, I think, I hope they make the best teachers and can help others. So that's why we do it. So I hope this helps. I think I'll do another video or two, kind of broadening out, maybe give you some ideas on some books. I know I've been asked a lot about resources. And uh, hopefully the next time I film, I'll be, you know, in the luxury of an air-conditioned area because it's hot. So hope you all have a great day. I hope this helps. And uh, we'll talk to you more soon. And um, y'all take care.